Thank you, Tanya, and thank you, Autodesk, for doing all these good things for us. And our next speaker is uh, Mickey Steiner. Mickey Steiner the head, is the head of the Israel Innovation uh, Center of RWE, a huge European energy uh, company. And he will speak about the future by RWE. Mickey, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me here. I guess I have to be close to the microphone. Well, first of all, really thank you for, for having me because I came from the software industry. I worked for many years in SAP doing enterprise software and suddenly being in such an inspiring company of companies who are doing things to make the world a better place is really uh, refreshing and very nice to be in this area. I joined uh, RWE in January when they have decided, or before I go that, when they have decided to reinvent themselves and go into new areas because they found out that to produce energy the traditional way, using fossil fuels and using uh, even re renewable energies, is a business model which is going to be a dead end. It's hard to say, but this is the fact. So just a few numbers about the company, just to, to, to give you a basic idea. RW is the largest energy producer in Germany, as you can see here in the German electricity market. We are present in many other European countries. We have about 51 billion euros in revenue out of producing, producing and selling energy and gas. We have about 26 million customers, mostly, uh, um, mostly electricity and partially gas. And the number of employees is not so important. It will reduce anyway in the next few years. If everything that's predicted will happen. But we do generate 20, 217 tera, terawatt hours of energy every year, which is a huge amount. And one important part is that 30% more or less of the capacity of RWE is coming from renewables. It's sun, it's wind, and it's hydro. And an interesting fact is that on a good weekend when the industry is not working and when the weather is nice, the whole of Germany is running on renewables. So no fossil fuels, no nuclears are connected to the network, and the whole country is running on renewables. This is something I really like to say, and I like to hear it. Um, but on the other hand, it's bad news, and I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, you see the, the, basically the value chain on the bottom. Part of you on the first row may not be able to see it, but it's basically generation, transmission, distribution, metering, and finally the customers. So this is the full traditional value chain of any utility, and today RWE is looking at this whole value chain and is running this whole value chain. Now what is the future? The future is we, if we look at the trends, and these trends are not necessarily utility trends, but we see globalization, we see networking, people talk to, to people all the time. We see demography, demographic changes, people look for more comfort, people are more individualized and intelligent in terms of the way they live. Of course, internet. And finally, on the bottom right-hand side, the decentralization and customer generate their own electricity. And this is the main trend which affects not only RWE, it affects the whole European market and if eventually the, the rest of the world. I mean, the United States is going very fast in the same direction, which means people have PV, photovoltaic on the roofs, people have wind, people have storage in their homes, and pretty soon they will need less and less from the grid. Uh, this is an, uh, uh, a slide describing, first of all, some requirements that come from the German government. And one of the requirements, there was a laser here, but it seems not to be... One, the one requirement which RWE is really skeptic about is will energy consumption or electricity consumption will be really go down relative to 2000 when this was, or 2005 I think, when this was mandated, will it really go down 10% by 2020 and 25% by 2050? Probably not. But all the other things are actually happening. 20% by renewables by 2020. Uh, I don't know if you know, but in Germany there was a decision that all the nuclear electrical plants will be shut down by 2022. 
And this is going to happen. It's not like in Israel that one government decides and the other government is changing it. It's going to happen. Some of the nuclear plants of RW have already been decommissioned, and we have three more plants which are working. By 2022, they will be out of business, which means that, and the hope is that most of this will be replaced by renewables. This house, and you can see it then in, an, in, the, in another slide, I will jump straight to this one. This is really an energy positive house. It was built or refurbished by RWE with a lot of insulation, a lot of uh, photovoltaic storage in the basement. And this house basically does not buy any electricity from the utility. So this family, you see that they're pretty happy. A typical, it's actually, it's not a typical German family because they have two kids, but a typical German family has one and a half kids. Um, but basically they live off their own energy. They don't consume any energy from uh, the utility. Um, so you see here various slides which basically describe the concept of making money out in the green, or I jump back to another slide. We have still power when the day is over, when the sun is over, which really comes to stress the storage capability. So we have PV on the roof. In the basement, we have a storage. There are many houses which are equipped with a CHP, which is a combined heat and a photovoltaic unit, which produces heat and electricity and storage all at the same time. But my main message to you, and again, e-mobility, today RWE has 2,800 charging stations across Germany and Holland, and the whole electricity coming into the e-vehicles is produced by renewables. So the e-vehicle drivers can have the satisfaction that they're really driving on clean energy. Of course, all of you electricians know that we cannot distinguish between the electrons coming from the plants and the electron coming from the PV, but there is always enough electricity in the network to feed the EV charging stations so that the company can really vouch for the fact that all electric vehicles are run from renewable energy. I'll go one, one step for, uh, forward to, to really say what is it that RWE is looking for, because this is the main message I think also for you people. Um, the company, as I said before, came to the conclusion that uh, producing energy and supplying it, even if it's from renewables, is a business model which is dying. The reason for that is that, as I said before, people produce their own energy. We are seeing communities which are developing, which have PVs, have wind energy, have storage, and they don't really need the grid. And there is even a trend, nobody is still disconnected from the grid, but it might happen. So we are looking for, not for the traditional solutions, which some of which are represented here, we're looking for some solutions which can solve or which we can create new business opportunities for RWE. Business opportunities in the area of big data, where we want to be able to analyze our customers, analyze their needs. Of course, in Germany, it's a little bit difficult because they are very fanatic about their privacy, but it's still possible. We have some data that we can use internally without disclosing anything to outside. Uh, to be able to know and predict the needs in the grid, to be able to know and predict the flows in the grid in various hours of the day. We are, we are starting to cope with decentralized energy with solutions to communities. And some of you may have heard the term microgrids, which are small grids, which, self, which are self-managing. The whole control of the grid, the whole control of the flow in the grid, the whole monitoring of the grid is not trivial. It's quite difficult, and these are solutions we are looking for. Uh, we are looking for solutions in the area of smart home. Inside the home, outside of the home, the complete management of the energy in the home, energy coming from the photovoltaic, from the grid, energy being produced by the home itself, and also a community which can trade in energy amongst themselves, which means we have a group of houses. Some of, our, some of them are working people, some of them are retired people, some of them live at home during the day, some of them are not home during the day. So we can trade an energy between or amongst ourselves and pay each other for the energy, because if I invested in a PV and my neighbor did not, I want to be able to charge him for the energy. And it's all, you have to develop this whole energy trading market between peer-to-peer, -peer, which means people who don't want to bill each other or don't want to know about each other's bank account, which immediately points to some kind of digital currency or some kind of ways to exchange value, which is not real money, and then convert it back to money. 
So I'm speaking in vague terms because we are looking for things which exist in Israel of which we have not thought about. Of course, there are also other technologies which exist in Israel which we can use, like for example storage, like for example uh, generation and optimized generation, but the first sector we're looking for are really those outside of the box technologies. Oops, sorry. We have this group called disruptive digitization, which is really looking for, for example, e-mobility and various new models of e-mobility in terms of charging, sharing charging stations. I have a charging station in front of my home. You want to stop in front of my home and charge your car while I'm not there? Fine, we have to find a way how to, how to manage all of that. And finally, a new area, and these are five specific areas that we are looking for in, in this, in this uh, context. The new area that we just started now called urban concepts, which has to do with smart street lighting, smart management of cities from a point of view of a utility. Uh, for example, smart vehicles and the management of smart vehicles in the city, sharing vehicles, etc. So basically, the message here is we are looking for you. We're looking for innovation from our ecosystem, from the funds which are here in Israel, from you guys here in the audience and others. So if you have something that you want to talk to me about, I'm here. Thank you very much.